Did they all leave? Who? All of the people, the customer service agents. Yes. This is the problem with the landscape of travel in 2022. Gay agents just be like F it, and they walk away. I'm Misty. I'm Lexi. And today we are talking about the landscape of travel. First off, I guess we have to say it. We're, we're back. back. It's been a while. I think our last time you saw us was in 2020. Was oh. it 2020? Was it? It was 2020. It was 2020. You saw and us then, right before the pandemic. Right. And then the pandemic hit, crippled us. We had to go through rehab, get our walking legs back. It took a couple years, but we are here with you again. You had lost me on the rehab thing. I was like, did we? What happened to us? Oh, we're walking again. Okay. I mean, there's so much that's happened since then. For me, yes. um... When I was last here, I worked in Kuwait. I've resigned since then and came home. So now I am fully back in America. She's an American citizen. She's not an expat anymore. I know. It's so different. It's like my old identity versus my new identity, who I am today. Uh, it's totally different. Even mm -hmm. to the point of I still have a few Arabic words that are still in my vocabulary. But like... You start to lose it, don't you? Yes. Or you realize that when you're saying it, nobody gets it. Yeah, that'll Like when that'll I'm work. like, oh, inshallah, it'll work out. People just look at me and I'm just like, okay. Do they stop you when you say that or do they let you just keep on going on? They let me just go on. And even to the point of I realize I text these things. Mm -hmm. um, so, or like I'll say yalla and nobody, they get it in context, but it's okay. So no, I'm back in America now. Um, I am an entrepreneur. I started my own business, so I'm fully involved in that. It's kicking my ass because 2022 has been very interesting in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and travel. Picking back up and travel. I'm trying to do it again. I was grounded for like 19 months, so I couldn't go anywhere. Kuwait had a real lockdown. They really actually closed their borders for the expats that were living in the country. So I stopped essentially every bit of movement for about 19 months. Like it was so crazy that if you left the country, you wouldn't have been able to get back into Kuwait. Right, and at the beginning, they weren't even allowing you to leave. Oh, so by the time it got to the point where I could leave, they kept opening and closing the borders, and so you didn't want to get stuck out because that was actually where you worked and you made your money. Mm -hmm. um, I stayed as long as I could, and then I had some family issues, and then I came home. So it was, like, perfect. It worked out. I love it because so much in your life has changed, and mine is still very much the same. Like, really? Yeah, I mean... Still working for an airline. I'm, I mean, obviously, like, the pandemic, like, ground to a halt all of my travels. Yeah. Because I was getting up to a point where I was, like, getting seven countries a year. That's and so crazy. It is. And so can you just imagine? The pace of seven countries a year is nuts. Absolutely. So then going to that to being, like, stuck at home for a year, and it just got to a point. I, I literally had a moment at at least middle of 2021 where I thought, okay, next year, health and safety don't even matter anymore if I can't travel again. <laughs> like, we're at the point <laughs> where I, it just, I stopped caring. So I, I'm so happy that travel is back, that things, I mean, for new the most normal. It's definitely new normal. Everything has changed. Wow, that phrase is so annoying. I mean, I get it. It literally is what it is. We are in the new normal of what things are because the pandemic has permanently changed how we move around the world. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, just how it was. I just want it to be how it was. And do you think it'll ever be how it was? Like 2019 travel. Mm -mm. It's, it's very much like prior to 9-11. Ah. I mean, prior to 9-11, you could go up to the gate and pick somebody up. Today, it's not, it's unfathomable. I, my favorite story, I always say this, mm -hmm. my favorite story, I was in TSA, mm -hmm. um, there was a lady in front of me, she had a water bottle in her backpack. She sends her bag through the x-ray, and the TSA agent, obviously, she gets pulled to the side and she has to take the water bottle out. So the TSA agent takes the water bottle out and she's like, you can't have this, ma'am. And the lady is like, since when? <laughs> and TSA agent looked at her like, bitch. And then she finally, she was like, for the last 20 years. And I just die laughing. I'm like, ah, oh, she's not traveled. You cannot have water. 
I will say though that like COVID has fluctuated, so PCRs are not as prevalent anymore. Mm-hmm. COVID boosters and COVID vaccination doesn't seem to be like a hindrance to get into countries mm-hmm. as it was. Yeah. But at the same time, there have been some really cool technological advances because the whole like hands free, not touching anything has changed things. Mm-hmm. If you don't have global entry, one, what are you doing with your life? I'm just going to do a quick aside for global entry. I'm plugging this. We're not right. getting paid for any of the stuff that we talk about. I'm just giving, I'm just giving this game for free to you. You should get global entry. It's $100 for five years, and it allows you to get both pre-check and the ability to go through customs Mm -hmm. more quickly. And it was a great deal when I got it four years ago. It's even better now because when you go through the global entry area, you don't even have to scan your passport anymore. Isn't it just like biometric? Yeah. It's so quick. And let me just piggyback on that. Again, we're not getting any money for this, but... (laughs) There are a lot of credit cards, and I'll just name three, that will give you credit for global entry, Mm -hmm. i.e. the American Express Platinum Card, um, the Chase Sapphire Reserve Card, and there's one other card, but there's multiple cards. Just check it. They'll give you the credit back on your statement for the $100. Mm -hmm. I just renewed my global entry for the third time. And um, I paid with it, and I have a positive credit for my $100. So it's essentially free. Nice. But yeah. I will say on that, like, mm-hmm. definitely get Global Entry because it does give you TSA pre-check. But because so many people have it now, yeah, not necessarily Global Entry, but pre-check specifically, yes. it's almost just like a regular schmegular line now. I mean... Yes, for the line, but the fact that you still don't have to take, take off, off your, your shoes, shoes, your belt, and take out your toiletries. That is pre-9-11 stuff, too. So, those yeah. are perks. The other thing is that with our, um, so, I went to renew my, res- uh, my residency. <laughs> I went to renew my global entry. Mm-hmm. My appointment, because I was conditionally approved, I have to go for an interview. Yeah. So, I didn't have to interview the second time. But oh. I entered the first time, the second time, this is my third time, I have to interview now. I couldn't actually get an Atlanta location, mm-hmm. or a Las Vegas location, or a Los Angeles location. None of those were options. They had Arizona out in Douglas, Arizona, which is near Tucson. They mm-hmm. had Mobile, Alabama. They had like all these weird, quirky locations. Mm-hmm. And my appointment is not until December. You know what? That happened to me the first time I got global. Well, the only time. I'm still on my first global entry. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't get a, a t- or I couldn't get an appointment for Vegas for like months after. We had a trip. We were going to um, Thailand. We were mm-hmm. going to Bangkok in July. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get an appointment until about September. So Diambe was getting her global entry mm-hmm. at the same time. She's like, oh, let's just fly down to Arizona and do it. And I didn't. I just couldn't didn't have the time, etc. And so that's when that's the time that she left me while I was standing behind that person that got deported cuz she had her global entry but I hadn't flown with her down to Arizona in order to get mine. Right. So my appointment is in Mobile in December. December. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the note for this. Don't save your global entry until like you're right about to leave for a trip. So that's going to be the same thing with like passports. Yeah. Don't like Just get that stuff now. Get it now, and then when your trip comes up, you don't have to worry about it. But trying to do it, like, a week before a trip, great. Oh, it's not even... You can't do it a week before a trip. Like, literally, you can't walk in and do your interviews anymore. No. But you know what's crazy? Mm -hmm. So, 2019, my passport was expiring in 2020, Mm -hmm. and I was at the end of my pages. I had gone to Ireland right before the pandemic, December of 2019, And as I was coming in, she was looking at my passport, and she said, you're on your last page. This is the last place you're going to go on this passport. Like, Irish immigration, they're a little brusque, or at least she was. And so as we were doing that, I thought, okay, I need to get this updated. Because we had had a plan that it was it March or April of 2020, we were supposed to be going down to Colombia. Oh, we were. We were going to do, like, this whole tour. We had a whole plan. We, pandemic, but. Yeah, life just ground to a halt for us. Yes. So I had requested a new passport December of, no, January of 2020. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even expedite it because I was being cheap. 
but I managed to get mine back in three weeks and I'm so happy I did because who knows what would have happened if I would have waited like two months longer. Did you get the 56 pages? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't even, I renewed in um, 2018 and they didn't even give me an option. They said there was no more small passports. Oh, I feel like I still had the option to request a small passport or the large one. So I did get more pages because I was under the assumption then, I was like, well, if I used up all my all of my pages and my old small passport in 10 years, the way I'm traveling now, I'm going to go through that way faster. I mean, didn't the like universe... we lost almost two years of our life. Yeah. The universe had different plans for all of us. So with that in mind, we are... I don't, can you say we're post pandemic? I would like to say we are post pandemic. Okay. I mean, like, how much post do you have to get? It's been You're right. I think it's pretty much over. Like, we've entered inflation. So, like, you can't have two struggles. You either are inflation and, like, exorbitant costs, or we're, like, in the pandemic fighting okay. a disease globally. So, I feel like they had to just shut that down and be like, we're done with it. And then. Now we're living in when, like, a, a carton of eggs is $12 and milk is, like, why would you buy it? And water is, it's almost gone. Good luck. So, <laughs> I'm not sure. I feel like we're post-pandemic. I'm post-pandemic. Okay. okay. I'm well, over it. I'm going to go ahead and say it. So, we're post-pandemic and now we're looking at what does travel look like in this new world that we're in? Because we kind of got to see a little bit of what travel looked like during the pandemic. Well, I'll put it like this. I traveled a little bit once it seemed like it was starting to wind down and the world was starting to open up, mm -hmm. but now it feels like the world is open again. We're there. So yeah. what does travel look like now? Um, so I've been traveling and mm -hmm. there's a shortage of staff. So they say that in the year 2022, there has been over 128,000 flights canceled, give or take, you know, 10 or 25, but... And that's due to a shortage of aircraft, st like uh, staff, pilots. They let them all go. Like they gave them early retirement and then pilot school is so damn expensive. Who's going? It's $100,000 just to go. Plus like mm -hmm. all of the FAA regulations for licensing and hours. You couldn't even like rush a group through. Yeah. There's a shortage of airport staff. I'm, I'm not sure where everybody's working because TSA agents is a shortage. Mm -hmm. Like when I go to the airport and I have TSA pre-check, I have clear, also get clear. Clear is $179. You can add up to five uh, members for $60 a piece. And you can do all your minors for free um, as long as they're under 16 or something like that. Um, so it's definitely a benefit. But also if you have certain credit cards, they'll give you a credit i.e. American Express Platinum card. I will say this numerous times. It's my favorite card. But they give you $179 credit, so mm -hmm. essentially it's free. Um, on my statement, I'll screenshot it, but I got the credit for Clear and the credit for Global Entry, like really back-to-back -back, because they renewed at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's an annual fee. But, and if you're worried about your biometrics, welcome to the new age. Your biometrics are not yours anymore. So... <laughs> They're no. fully in the system. Yeah. Okay. So, like, clear. I've, I've been flying, and even then, like, having those, I'm still not, like, breezing through mm -hmm. the airport domestically. I'm still, like, okay, I have to wait in line a little bit. So, here's what I've noticed. I've taken quite a few flights, and non-rev has become rougher and rougher recently. Due like the cancellations. I don't even know if it's cancellations. It, yes. It has right. to be. So, it is partially cancellations, but partially due to just the number of people that are traveling, it's been so rough. Okay, let me tell you. You feel there's more people traveling now than there were in 2020? Well, I feel like there's, in 2020, yeah. In like 2019. Okay, 2019, yeah. I think, oh, that's a good question. I'm gonna say same number of people traveling, but there's fewer staff, fewer flights. Right, that's what I'm saying. So it does impact fuller flights now. Yeah. Okay, so let me tell you about coming home from Bogota while I'm telling you. You were you were part of that experience with me. I was stressed. It was stressful. I was like, who flies like this? Golly. So I was non-revving home from Bogota. And the day before my flight, I'm checking my flight loads. I think my initial flight, I don't even remember. I went through a lot of iterations. I bought about six tickets, oh. six non-rev tickets oh, wow. to figure out on different airlines, figure out how I was going to get home. 
So initially, I was going to use Avianca to go from Bogota to Mexico City, Mexico City into Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I just figured if I can go to, like, Mexico City, if I get stuck there, it's a city that I could easily find an Airbnb and stay for a little bit. Right. Well, those flights were looking full. So I went through maybe four different flight options. It was actually the day before I was leaving, and I was just, I remember I was on the phone with you trying to go through different options, and then we got down to the, should you just buy a confirmed ticket? I mean, now we just get to it faster, because I'm just like, goddamn. Yeah, but the confirmed tickets were expensive. They were, I mean, expensive is relative. They were at minimum like $700, but I wasn't doing it. I mean, that's a normal confirmed ticket. That is actually the landscape of travel now. Regular tickets on a legacy airline are going to be six to $700 round trip. Yeah, I, I just wasn't doing it. So I thought, you know what? I might end up looking for another Airbnb in Bogota, stay for an extra week. Then I was like, you know what? We're just going to go down to Chile. I've been wanting to go to Santiago de Chile. I'm she she just started like naming out locations. I'm like, okay. So people would be like, where's Lexi? And I'd say, oh, she's about to head to Chile. Next thing I know, I talk to her. I'm like, oh, she's about to head to Peru. They're like, okay. And then I was like, oh, she's about to head. And I just stopped saying, I was like, she's leaving and going somewhere. Look, you just have to be flexible in this new landscape. So I get to the airport and I decide I was going to try taking a United flight. And there's just something about some airports. They don't, typically with non-rev, if you were flying standby, they'll give you a temporary boarding pass. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is just get through, you wait at the gate to see if you get your, your real ticket. But when you're international, some of the places won't give you the temporary ticket to get through until they feel like you're going to make it. Okay. So I got to the airport. The flight that I was supposed to be on was leaving at 6. I got there at maybe like 3.30 in the mm -hmm, morning. Mm -hmm. 6 in the morning. I got there at 3.30 in the morning. Probably a little too early. But I wanted to make sure I had time to get through security and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, they tell me, hey, we're not really looking at this flight. Come back in an hour as I'm <laughs> at the ticket counter. I was like, okay. So I'm just sitting around, and mind you, you know outside of, like, passport control and security, there's nothing to do. At all. At, you're just sitting in the ticket counter. I was like, that's fine. I'm going to sit here for an hour. So I come back, and they said, we're still not clearing it. Check back in, like, 45 minutes. Damn. What time was the flight? The flight was at 6. But it was delayed? No. They're just saying, like, oh, what essentially what that means is that the flight is kind of full. It's not so open that they can guarantee me a ticket, mm. and they don't want to give me a ticket. They don't even want to give me a temporary ticket to get through unless they can guarantee it. Oh, because then you'll be back. Okay. Well, no, you just go to someone at a gate, and they put you on the next flight, which is why I don't understand why they do this to you. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting. It's about 5 a.m. now, so I go up again, and finally they're like, okay, we'll give you this this past it's not even my actual ticket it's not like they cleared me they just right it's just a boarding it's like a gate so you can get through customs yeah and do you know what he had the nerve to tell me he's like you better go now it's <laughs> like now it's a rush and i was like i you're the same person i've been talking to several times why are we in a rush now when i've i've been, been here for an hour and 45 minutes i know it's a rush yeah so now i'm getting to the line and bogota's airport in the morning moves slow it moved slow, and there were a few people that were, like, antsy in line. Because you know how you'll always see that one person who's rushing to the front because their flight is mm -hmm, behind? Mm -hmm. I think someone tried that, and you just got that feeling of, get in line, buddy, we're all waiting, <laughs> and we're all late for our flight because it took so long to get through the snake of a line. So I finally get through. I get up to the gate, <laughs> give me my ticket, and I'm like, oh, thank God. So this is getting out of Bogota. And I was going from Bogota on United, it had to be into Houston. Mm -hmm. Well, I missed that flight. Turns out I didn't get my ticket on that one. So now I'm like, okay, we gotta wait for the wait, next. Wait, what? So you got a ticket? I thought you said I you got made... my. I'm sorry, I got my temporary ticket to go through security, but I didn't make my first flight. Oh, so then you finally made it through. Why didn't you make it? It was full. The flight was full. Yeah. I'm actually listen. I'm reliving this. Like I wasn't there for it. Like she wasn't talking. You didn't make the flight? <laughs> no, because by the time they gave it to me, I didn't have time to get through the gate. And I was talking to another person who was non-revving. She's like, yeah, they won't let you through. That happened to her. She had tried to take a midnight flight the night before and oh missed it. It had been rough. And she's like, you know what? I'm starting a new job. I, I just bought my ticket. I was like, okay. 
So it was. She's like, I don't have time for this nonsense. Exactly. So then I got onto the 8 a.m. flight. Okay. But instead of going into Houston, then I had to go to Newark in order to fly back to Vegas. Do you know how crazy it is to be going from Bogota, All flying to the way. Newark, in order to fly back to Las Vegas? But you seem to have good luck out of Newark. No, you slept in the airport overnight one time. Never yeah. mind. No, we don't We don't have good luck in Newark because this experience really tainted. Even sleeping in the airport was better than what I had to go through on this. So they put me on a flight. I get off the plane. I thought my flight left. I got off the plane at mm-hmm. like 3.30. I thought my flight left at 6 p.m. I'm like, okay, I've got time to go sit down and eat. I sit down and eat, and then I look at my phone, and I realize my flight was departing at 4.07. And I was like, I just ordered food and just paid for it in the airport. But what I'm time right... is it? It's like 3.40. Yeah. Like no, wait. Your flight is departing. No, you can't. Sorry. I'm... Move. Let me get my story together. Let me. Because I was like, wait, you have to be on the plane. Boarding doors started closed. at 4.07. Okay. So then you had yeah. like 40 minutes. Because doors closed 20 minutes prior. You do, but I didn't have my ticket, so I needed to go up to the gate to verify. Because if they call you non-rev and you don't come up, then they move to the next person right. on the list. So now I'm waiting for my food, but the gate is directly behind me. So I'm like running over to the gate like, hey, did you call? And then I was like, we'll just abandon the food. I was like, well, if we don't make this flight, I'm going to be really mad if I abandon my food and I come back and it, they've, like, tossed it out because I disappeared. <laughs> and they're like, no, we haven't called non-rev yet. I was like, okay. So then I run back over, and basically I'm just kind of bouncing back and forth because literally here's the restaurant, the gates across the way. <laughs> and I was like, I just don't want to miss hearing my name get called, but I also really just don't want to waste, like, a $30 burger. Damn. Yeah. It's an airport. You know how this goes. This is true. So... Finally, I get my food, I run over, and they call my name right as I'm coming up. I was like, yes. And they're like, this is, you're the last seat that we have. Oh, nice. Yeah. I was like, this is beautiful. So I'm like, oh my gosh, today's kind of blessed. I only missed one flight out of Bogota. I've been stressing about this. What was I stressing about? She messaged like, I'm good, guys. Yeah, because I always like to let people know. Typically, if you're sitting in an airport and you have nothing to do but to stress, you decide to share that stress with others. <laughs> so I'll tell everyone, like, what's going on, I'm waiting for my flight, and I'm like, okay, I got cleared, I got my boarding pass, I'm sitting on the plane. So you put your stuff away, I pulled out my headphones, I, like, started opening and just, like, sneaking french fries while I wait for, like, the heavy smell of my food to die down. She's super anal about eating on a plane. If she buys outside food, she actually doesn't want that food scent to smell up the plane. She thinks she's being considerate. However, in the meantime, she's hungry while she's trying to be considerate of all these other people. Either way, we're just sitting there, the doors have closed. And I'm like, okay, we're going. She texts and says, I am taking off. I was like, oh, good. That was perfect. Yeah, but there's someone on the plane saying, no, he's right outside. He's right there. And so somehow they open the doors. (laughs) And then a flight attendant walks up to me and says, hey, the passenger showed up. You got to get your stuff. I thought it was illegal, like an FAA violation to open plane doors after they've shut if it's not a a, real life emergency. That's the thing. I thought so too. So I'm not quite sure how or what happened. Maybe the doors weren't all the way shut, but I'm in the back and it looks, now mind you, I'm in the very back of the plane, but it looks like the doors were shut. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe for some reason, some way, somehow, like maybe they shut, you know, the door when you're walking down the ramp, yeah. they shut that door, but not the aircraft door. Okay. So they, the person's like going to board, but you know, like no one else on the plane really understands that you're non-rev unless you're non-rev. Right. So all they see is me getting pulled off the plane. Like you're like grabbing your stuff and mind you, I'm not prepped for it. I put my stuff down and I was ready to like fly. So I pulled things out. I have my phone charging like <laughs> she's like I'm ready getting, she has a whole routine when she gets on the plane yes so suddenly like you're grabbing your stuff up like a hobo like you're embarrassed <laughs> like you you got your handbag your headphones are over here you got your cords dangling you have to get your bag from the overhead compartment I'm carrying a styrofoam container of a burger <laughs> I haven't gotten to eat and I'm getting off the plane and I'm like this is mortifying this is like traumatic so I get out and the like, the gate agent has, like, the courtesy. Be like, I'm sorry about that. And I was like, that's okay. I know there's nothing you guys could have done about it. Because I closed the door. 
Um, I mean, I was like, there's several things they could have did. No, and no, yes. no. It's like, he missed the boarding time. They shut the doors for a reason. If that had been Spirit, he would never have gotten on that flight. Right? Well, so we get outside. I'm sitting there trying to wait for him to finish closing up the flight before I go up and ask him to move me to the next flight. Well, he's oh, why are you being courteous when they didn't give a shit about you? Because they actually have stuff they have to do. Mm-hmm. Like, you, like close the doors and not let a guest on? Look, they still have a job, and I get it. They're they're doing something. Plus, I'm non-rev. She said they're doing something. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> There's I, something that's being done. <laughs> so I see him typing, and I was like, well, obviously, he's going to like wave me over, and I'm looking right at him. Like, Can you imagine? You're, he's at his podium, and I'm just staring at him, waiting for him to finish typing, and I'm going to pop up and be like, move me over. And then it felt like he finished rushing and then, like, zoomed out of there, like, ran away. And I'm like, hey! <laughs> and he's, like, just booking it away. Did you chase him? I would have yeah. chased him. Sir, come back, sir, sir, you're yeah. not done yet. <laughs> so I go to just, like, the next place I see an agent. I'm like, hey, I was non-rev and I got pulled off the flight. I thought, like, he was going to help me out. Can you just move me to the next flight going to Vegas? And they're right. like, oh, we can't do this. You need to go to the, the customer service area. So mm-hmm. I go to the customer service area, and I'm standing there. Mind you, I'm still holding this burger, and I was like, you know what? I don't care about the smell. Plus, it's cold at this point. So I just kind of start nibbling on it, and I'm like, the line's going to move because there's only five people in front of me. Did they all leave? Who? All of the people, the customer service agents. Yes. This is the problem with the landscape of travel in 2022. Gay agents just be like, F- it, and they walk away. Like, seriously, it's happened so many times. It's ridiculous. I waited an hour with only five people in line. And as a non-rev, you can't can't lose your shit. There's none of that. So I'm just sitting there getting furious because, mind you, during this time, the flight, the next flight to Vegas that I'm trying to get on is already boarded and left. I waited there so long (laughs) that my next opportunity to get out, and the only thing I could hope is that it was a full flight. Because if it was, like, wide open and I'm, like, sitting there stressing because I can't get in front. And it's not like you're going to be able to cut people in customer service. Right. They're all going through some stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, other people, my flight's been canceled. My flight got in late Mm -hmm. and I missed my my connection. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do for me? So by the time I get up there, (laughs) you know when you're just so frustrated? And I was like, I don't want to spend a night in Newark. So this is why I look so carefully for my connections. I try and look for connections that are places that are relatively inexpensive, which is why I was trying to get to Mexico City. Because if I got stuck there, you're still in Mexico City. Otherwise, you're in New Jersey or New York. New York. Like, what? I'm not going to find a a cheap hotel there. This is true. So did you get the next flight? How long? I don't remember how long it was. She has so many of these harrowing stories that they just... Oh, no. Well, I was... So I... (laughs) I, during the entire time I've been texting you and it just, I could, I felt like I could feel your stress for me. And I was like, well, I guess we both don't need to be stressed about this. So I stopped messaging for a little bit. And I think that actually might've made it worse. You're like, are you there? Did you get on a plane? What happened? Because now we check in now, yes. like, um, the three of us, we just start checking in with each other. Like, did you hear from her? Where is she at? It's almost like aliens could have abducted her to drop her off. And we're not sure which flight she took. Oh. <laughs> They finally put me on the, f- the next flight, so that flight doesn't leave out until like 8.30 p.m., so you're just kind of like, but that's also the last flight of the night, mm-hmm. so now it's getting worrying, so you ask the gate agent, you're like, what are my chances? Am I going to make it on this? And they're like, uh, I don't know. It looks a little full. And I was like, I mean, I don't want to tell you how to do your job, but could you be a little bit more specific? You know what's really confusing, though, mm-hmm. about gate agents is that they fly non-rev as well, so... You would think that they would be a bit more like... In your corner? In your corner because... Yeah. But then maybe that's... We don't recognize that a lot of them don't travel. Maybe that's it. Because it, sometimes it does feel like... If I was talking to someone who I know has been in the situation that I've been in, I would definitely be trying to like just pump them up instead of like deflate them. I don't think I would try to be Or be apathetic. Vague. Yeah. So now when she says, typically once she's like, I'm on the plane in my seat, you're like, you're good. But after being pulled off the aircraft, after yeah. you think the door has closed, you're no longer safe. Yeah, there's, there's no safety, safety anymore. Safety, 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 safety. So I did finally make that 8.30 flight, and I was so happy. I didn't want to, 
like 8 30 is too early to sleep in the airport because the one time i slept in the <laughs> airport it was like a midnight flight and the next flight's at 6 a.m so it didn't make sense to go home but if your flight like leaves at 8 30 and you don't have another option the other thing i was looking at was trying to switch airlines which meant i was gonna have to change terminals to a flight that left at 9.05, and I was like, if I don't make an 8.38 flight, is there a way that I can run fast enough to get to another, like, another terminal mm. in Newark to get to... Is Newark expansive? Are the terminals really far apart? I don't think I, they are. Like, I mean, it's big enough. Any, there's no airport. 20 minutes yeah. is too much of a, it's too close of a window. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was feeling like. But I was going to try making it. Mm -hmm. But I think if that had happened, I would have just been even more mad if, like, you get to the other one right as the doors close. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, so I've bought United tickets. I've bought Avianca tickets. I bought Aero Mexico tickets. I was like, I'm getting out of this. I'm getting home some way, somehow. But all of these are refunded. Yeah, they're refunded after the fact. But at this point, you're just throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. But the landscape now is that there's such a shortage of personnel that you're just not going. Like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you have an issue mm -hmm. and you have any kind of window of time that you're concerned about, mm -hmm. the most inhibiting part of travel now is going to be if you have to get an answer from, like, a human. If yeah. there is any kind of human interfacing that is necessary... You should be worried because there's such a shortage of staff, right? I don't know where everybody's at. I'm not sure, like, yeah. what happened. I'm not even going to give you my real, like, emotion on this topic because I don't understand where everybody's at. Like, airline jobs allows you to fly. Did they just stop hiring people? Like, is it the people that don't want to work or is it the companies that are fronting like they want to work and they're just not hiring people? I think they're hiring because there's people who have a want to fly, that's what's so crazy is that they're having to cancel flights because you don't have people that are working there, but you have you have a customer base. So airlines want their they want a full staff so that they can service these customers that want to travel. But basically, that's where the landscape of travel is: is that flights are full. They're just they're it's just full and like an uncomfortable experience this is now. true i was on a delta flight the delta flight coming from miami you guys know i'm not a fan of miami's airport there's like two real things i'm passionate about miami's airport not being great and paris not being like this phenomenal less location or destination that people love so i was flying delta out of miami and we needed to check our bags because we're changing i was changing complete airlines now, I was going from American to Delta, and it wasn't even, like, a easy exchange. So, um, we needed to check the bags. So, we're standing in line. When I looked, there was, like, three agents. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, let me hustle. Let me see where the sky priority line is. It's full. It's not a good option. I was like, oh, a hack is sometimes you can go check for sky caps outside. Okay. Yeah. And see if there is like a line or it's empty that you can drop your bag. So I'm like, okay, let me go check the sky cap. I'm outside trying to check the sky cap. And the guy, he's really nice. He's trying to explain to these frustrated people why he was going to have to charge them to, for an extra bag that they obviously did not pay for. And I agree with like how kind he was being. But in the meantime, I have a real life problem. I need you to move along so I can check my bag because I'm very close to the cutoff time. And... He's just trying to be so gracious and courteous to these people. And I'm like, who the fuck are these people? Like, I just check their bags and move along. I got some, I got problems. <laughs> so I'm like volleying back and forth because I'm now being in the airport trying to find the best solution. Mm -hmm. um, I finally get up to the sky cap and he was like, oh, they're about to close the flight. You need to hurry up and go inside. I said, there's somebody inside at the line. I'm trying to find the quickest way to get my bag on this aircraft. Can't you just check me in? He's like, right. no. I was like, you're useless. Wow. Like, literally Ouch. useless as a whole human being, okay? Wow. So I go back in, and by the time I walk back in to see Delta at the front line, because now, you know, you need to mm -hmm. check it, there's, like, one person up there. Yeah. And I'm like, did the people leave with all these people in line? Some, everybody was trying to check their bags. All their flights were super close. None of the staff really gave a shit. Mm -hmm. And um, that was how my bags ended up getting left in Miami. I was pissed. I've actually complained yeah. to Delta. I'm like, you guys owe me some points because this is absolutely ridiculous and unfathomable. But yeah. 
it's stupid. It's so stupid. That to the point of I think that's why they're putting so many AI alternatives in. Like mm-hmm. Delta has a new program called um, face res- recognition. Mm-hmm. So it's like a TSA pre-check. You have to have TSA pre-check, and you have to have the face recognition. Okay. Through the app, you you volunteer for it. You come into the line. You stand at this machine. It scans your face biometrically. Then it says you're good to go. You put your bag on the conveyor belt. It weighs it. Prints the tag, you put the tag on the bag, and then it goes through. Oh, nice. That is So there's nice. one Delta rep that's there just okay. monitoring the process. But they're, they're getting rid of gate agents. I mean, like, they're getting rid of, like, bag and tag sections because I mm. think it's way more efficient. Yeah. Because I'm in and out like that. I feel you. I will just say, in defense of, like, the ticket counter agents, I, I get it. It feels like as a customer, you're like, they're disappearing. But oftentimes, I feel like they'll stick around to try and get through a busy point. Like, oh, everyone stop your breaks and lunches so you can help us get through this. But then there's no getting through it. Like, the there's line... There's no end of the line. Yeah, the line never stops. And eventually, then everyone has to go. But once... I don't know if you've ever had to do scheduling on a mass scale. And I don't just mean for, like, airline. I just mean for, like, anything. But once one person misses, like, lunch or breaks... It just throws everything off, so you finally get to a point where everyone has to go at once. And as a customer, you're like, this is the most frustrating thing I've ever seen in my life. And I know they have to run a business, so I just, those are the times I try to be understanding, but at least when I was standing in Newark, I was like, I was just so frustrated that I wanted to yell, and because I couldn't, I just wanted to cry. (laughs) Like, you know when you're just so mad, and you're like, you can't. Yeah, because you yeah. actually don't want to go off on them because you yeah. actually need them. So when yeah. it doesn't happen, you're just like, well, I'm in the airport. Mm-hmm. What can I do? Yeah. Now, the other thing that I think has started to change travel is that lots of people are starting to work remote more, mm-hmm. myself included. And I wonder, how do you think that's, I mean, I guess I get it from my perspective. How do you think that's changing the way that people are moving around? Well, obviously, if you're a remote worker, mm-hmm. I, it depends on if you have kids or no kids, right? It yeah. also depends on how, like, if you were not a traveler before, I don't think remote work has made you travel more. Yes. I think it just makes you buy a larger house so you have more space so you can work at home. But if you were a more mobile traveler mm-hmm. or somebody that wants to move around, um, I think that I don't feel like it's put a strain on it or anything. I but, do feel like it's changed, well, at least the way I travel, because before I was taking, like, vacations constantly, but now, even like this, I visited you for, what, like, two months out of the last year, I've been working had, in yes. Atlanta, I've worked in other countries, but to your to your point, if you weren't a traveler before, I don't think people are like, oh, I'm working remote, so suddenly I've become a traveler, but I do think that you're seeing a different way where... People are like, well, I'm going to go home and see my parents and work for, like, a couple of weeks. Oh, okay, so I get that. So then you're working remote. Also, I think that with the way that the pandemic has hit, travel nurses have increased. Mm-hmm. So maybe that has also added an additional burden. I'm not sure who else, but, yeah, people working from other locations, like I'm just coming to visit somebody and mm-hmm. I can stay longer. Yeah. Maybe that does entice you to leave more. I know when I was down in uh, Columbia... I had gone on a tour, and another guy was saying that he was doing... Now, like, when I went, I stayed in one city. He was doing a multi-city tour where he was changing locations about every three days for a month while working remote. That's incredible. And yeah, at that point, I'm like, are you working? What What do you do? Is it something where you do, like, three hours of work a day right. and then you go do things? Because I know for me, I would have been miserable if I wasn't... Like, I've basically created a home setup in these different places that Mm -hmm. I've gone. Because if I was doing, like, three days here and there, I would always feel like I never saw where I was. Because you're stuck working. Exactly. So what is the point of moving around that much? Just to say you did it? Three days is not enough, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah. And that's a strain on the ecosystem of travel, so just sit down. Okay. There's not enough people working to support that. That's frivolous. Yeah. (laughs) But 
travel has certainly changed in some interesting ways. I feel like it's definitely, we're getting some things back. There was a moment where it was, like, you go on a trip, and as you go, you need to get a COVID test before you can go into the country that you're going to. Mm -hmm. Even in Colombia, I had to get a COVID test to get back into the U.S. when I went there. So that was, like, my last day. I'm already stressed about non-rev. Then you throw in, okay, now I need to go get a COVID test. What if it comes back positive? What do I do? Like You know I, how much money these countries probably made off of that, though? You think? Well, think about it. Because I paid, um, I think, $40 mm-hmm. in Lisbon to get a COVID test mm-hmm. to come back. That wasn't the government. That was a private center outside of one of the pharmacies. You're right. So that was just, if, if I had to create an, an income stream, it was. So now that it's, it's winding down, I thought that was like a quick little hustle right there. Talk about gig economy work. Like, they came yeah. up with how can we capitalize off of this. Right. Because America was, like, make, allowing them to be free for us. But if you traveled, they were not free. They were not. And so the funny thing is, is that when I went to Mexico, Mexico has never required COVID tests to get into the country, but I thought I was going to have to get a COVID test. So when I left in June of 2022, um, I was still going to have to get a COVID test to come back into the U.S. Right before I was about to come back, like the weekend before or the week before, they, they cut it saying, no, you no longer need a test to come back home. I was right. like, oh, this is wonderful. So there was something that was just so interesting about um, the actual structure of how things were changing very quickly. It felt like you're always having to stay on the news. Travel didn't feel as easy as just going to the airport and being able to go. Because then you had to start figuring out, okay, so what does the testing look like? What vaccines do you need? What, just what is everything like? One of my favorite things that did come out of this was mm-hmm. the fact that you can wear a mask. Yeah. So if your mouth, if like your mouth falls open when you sleep on a plane, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. If your mouth falls open when you sleep on a plane, the best thing now is that you can put on a mask, go to sleep, and then just be agape and not and have a barrier of what you're breathing in, mm-hmm. and nobody's just staring at you while you like have your mouth just wide open and you're sleeping. That is like my favorite thing oh, that I came out of this. I still do wear a mask on planes and large part it's because of that i sleep on a plane i'm usually out before the wheels are up (laughs) so with that in mind i just put my headphones on my mask on and you just zone out so beautifully yes and the the purell wipes i always enjoy those they stopped giving those out did they yeah Mm. no they seem to give out free headphones again though Mm. who needs those who does who's getting on a plane without your headphones who does that that's weird I mean, I read my TV, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah. I mean, I do remember thinking, like, pre-pandemic, as I started carrying, like, um, Bluetooth headphones, what was the next evolution that airlines were going to do? Do you have that dongle? Do you have the Bluetooth dongle to help you be able to wear your Bluetooth headphones and watch TV? No, I actually just plug the, um, what is it called? I was about to call it the USB jack. The cord? The auxiliary cord. Yeah, I just plug it into oh, my Oh, so headphones. you carry the cord? I'm hit or miss. Sometimes I actually will just stare at the screen. I don't even put on, like, the subtitles. I'll just watch a movie. And if I'm being honest, I usually, like, um, you know how they have the picture of the plane and they show you where you are? I'll keep that on mine, and I just watch whatever movie someone else around me is watching. So I watch somebody else's movie. I'm like, oh, that's so interesting. The yeah. one I want to watch now is called The Paramedic or the, the something. I watched it, most of it, and I was like, this is a good movie without sound. I'm like, I need to listen to this. Like Ambulance, one with Jake Dylan. Ah, the yes. Ambulance. That was okay. so good. So good. And I read most of that movie, so like. I love it. Why does a movie become more interesting when you're watching it over someone's shoulders? Because it's like you have to create your own. You're like, yeah. hmm. Hmm. And then I remember I was watching one time and this guy's shoulder went in the way. I was like, doesn't he know we're watching a movie? <laughs> <laughs> Why is your shoulder there, bro? We're watching this together. Right? We just want the shared experience of this movie time. Yeah. But now I've seen a lot of... Like, food a lot is of, back. Food is back. That is so exciting. Food is back. Oh, man. So when I went to Tulum in um, August of 2020, extra rough because... They were just, I was on Delta, flying confirmed, yes. and they gave out like a little Dasani bag, 
a bag of goldfish and something else. Oh, the Biscoff crackers. They Love just put those. it in a sealed plastic bag and just gave it to everyone. I was like, huh. Just just goldfish? And That's I, all you get for the whole flight. Yeah. But now that food is back, I love that. But have you seen, like, the the new aircraft are coming out without TVs, and now mm-hmm. it's all about the Wi-Fi for your phone? Yeah, with the iPhone. Ah, this was something that Delta got rid of. They you used to get free messaging and Wi-Fi mm-hmm. as a T-Mobile customer. Mm-hmm. It is now gone, and really? you get free messaging mm-hmm. on Messenger, Facebook Messenger yes. app or whatever, something else, and WhatsApp. But you have to pay $5 for the Wi-Fi. Now, $5 is not that much. And it probably is actually a monetary, like, win for the airline because Mm -hmm. you think $5 is something that's palatable for most people. Yeah. But, like, I really miss my free Wi-Fi from T-Mobile. What happened to that T-Mobile? I love that all the big legacy carriers are actually getting the exact same things that the ultra-low-cost carriers have been doing. Like, people trash talk spirit... But all of the big carriers are starting to, like, take on those same things of making you pay for Wi-Fi when that wasn't something that they did before. I mean, I will say this, right, that basic... So, I'm a Delta Sky Miles mm-hmm. person. In America, I'm going to fly Delta. American has American Airlines has had the most canceled flights this year of most airlines. They also are, like, the worst airlines. So, I'm not really a fan of American oh, Airlines. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. Like... Okay. They well, still have an expansive network, but I can't defend them too hardcore because they did cancel one of my confirmed flights. See, and then they have to roll over all these people, but if the flight was damn near booked, now it's overbooked and they're asking yeah. people to give up. Anyway, whatever. Um, what was I going to say about Delta? I can see I got on a whole Was tizzy. it something nice? Yes. Oh, okay. So I was going to say, if it wasn't nice, you know what they say. Oh, basic. The basic economy yes. ticket. That is an ultra low-cost carrier equivalent. So, like, it's a spirit. It's a no bag, no carry-on. Mm-hmm. You get no points for those tickets as well. So if That's you crazy. are flying for points and you book a basic economy ticket, you are not going to get your points for that flight. Just want you guys to know that. Mm-hmm. I was like, and if your goal is to con- either get to or maintain your membership Mm -hmm. basic tickets are not even like just skip it i could see that so i did the basic ticket on american when i was flying down to mexico and one you're like boarding group number nine of nine (laughs) and they tell you they're like i think it's something like your overhead space isn't actually guaranteed and so I just... That's because you're boarding number nine. Yeah. Everybody has already brought to put their bags on. Exactly. So I get super nervous. I have like just my anxiety. I was like, it's a confirmed ticket. Why are you this nervous? I was like, well, because I'm going to be the last person on the plane, basically, next to the non-rev. <laughs> Somehow I'm still having a non-rev experience, and I don't want to <laughs> have to check my carry-on bag. So, but let me tell you. So when I was leaving Mexico, I was coming out of San Miguel de Allende in the middle of Mexico, and I had to take my shuttle. It's an hour and a half long shuttle. Midway through my shuttle ride, I get a text message that my flight, I'm going from QRO Airport in Mexico to Dallas, then Dallas on, oh, it was a crazy flight. Dallas to Phoenix, Phoenix to Vegas. Mm-hmm. Like, this isn't ideal, but I yeah. picked, it was just the cheapest ticket. Clearly. If I go confirmed, I go the cheapest way possible. 15 stops, why not? Yeah. Well, my flight from Dallas to to Phoenix was canceled. Mm. I was like, okay, so what are my options? So I reach out to them via chat. It's like, hey, my flight's been canceled. I just need to make it home today. What are my options? They're like, okay, we've got it. (laughs) We're going to put you on the flight from QRO to Dallas. Dallas to San... Not Bernardino. Just somewhere in Southern California. Santa Barbara. Dallas to Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara to Phoenix. Phoenix to Las Vegas. I was like, what? (laughs) What? No, thank you. Yeah. So I was like, okay, maybe I should chat with someone else. I was like, hey, I just checked your website. You guys actually have a direct flight from Dallas to Vegas. Any chance you can put me on that one? They're like, oh, um, yeah. Right? Who would take you on? Who would take seven layovers? Like, why would you want that? No one would want that, and I'm flying confirmed, so I was like, well, I might get a little saucy. I didn't, but 
I, I had a moment. I was like, just please put me on a direct flight. So they put me on a flight that ended up with an eight-hour layover in Dallas. So I was still pretty much getting in at the same time. I was like... Yeah, but that's better than seven layovers. Yes, but there was an earlier flight from Dallas to Vegas that they could have put me on. <laughs> that's why you give them the flight number. Well, next time I know that, I didn't think that they were actively trying to be as unhelpful. They're like, boarding group nine gets the last. You get the least of everything, even if your flight is canceled. We still want to make sure that the money you spent, the it's... flight experience is equal to the money you spent. <laughs> How much was that ticket? I have still like $500. $500. It's ridiculous. One way. Flight tickets are so expensive now. Yeah. Just, one way to come to Vegas was like $480. Like that was one way on a main cabin ticket. Like nuts. Well, you know when I was going to Columbus, so I was going for my best friend's baby shower, and I thought, well, I'm going to non-rev this. And you kind of get to a certain point where something is important enough that you probably shouldn't non-rev. And I think that was one of those situations so my first flight didn't make it. And mind you, this is at like three in the afternoon was my first option. Mm -hmm. And so then the next option wasn't until midnight. So I'm just sitting there and I'm getting nervous because I'm thinking if I don't make it on this flight at midnight, the baby shower is like the next day. I don't want her sitting there stressing about, am I going to make it? Because um, she was going to come and pick me up from the airport. And I was like, oh no, I don't want her like worrying about this and she's like I've got points I can just book you a confirmed ticket and you know I dig my heels and I'm like no no we'll figure this out non-rev will get me there but then I start thinking maybe I'll just buy a confirmed ticket so I looked at Spirit to go from Las Vegas to Columbus mm -hmm. one way $455 and that's is that with the bags because sometimes Spirits will really like get you well that was like that was with everything so oh, that okay. was with my carry-on bag but they probably advertise it as $197 by the time you spend four fifty, yeah. you might as well get on a real airline. No offense. That's extra rude. Well, anyway, well, that's why they like went out of business. But in my mind, I was like, I'm not spending four fifty. I'm not spending four fifty for a one way. And I just, well, I knew spirit she, nonetheless. I just knew she was getting nervous, and I was like, oh, should I do it? I didn't. I didn't do it. I took my chances. <laughs> <laughs> when you say it like that, you sound I like a terrible friend. <laughs> You sound so concerned. I really thought you were going to do it. I was really on the fence, but I'm like, I'm going to take my chances. I got on the plane, and there were maybe like 50 people, so I'm so happy I didn't. But here's what gets me. 50 people booked on this flight, and they were going to charge me $450 for a one-way ticket. How does that work? Why is it that expensive when the load capacity isn't full? I can't tell you how much it burned my buttons. Like, you know when you feel both relieved but pissed off? I'm like, thank God I made it. Also, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> it just, it was a mixture of those two emotions. Fuel is so high. Blame the yeah. OPEC nations. Fuel is so high. Yeah, I, mm, just extra annoyed by all of it's that. It's ridiculous. So, I'm going to tell you, here's the landscape of travel. Non-rev. <laughs> has always been a gamble, but now it's Russian roulette. Um, <laughs> regular travel with confirmed tickets, as I've done a few times, not substantially better. It's still, all the flights are booked. I've yet to get on a flight where there's not an empty seat. In fact, that's why I was like, we need to get on to Aer Lingus and see what our seat assignment was. Mm. And if they, if we're supposed to pay for additional seats, because I've never flown Aer Lingus before. Yeah. I will say, we're getting back into the carefree feeling. So, we are planning a trip to Europe. We're literally leaving tomorrow. And as it's going, I haven't checked to see if I needed a COVID test to get into Ireland. You probably don't. I'm pretty sure we don't. But I think I was going with, like, such confidence and impunity that, of course, we're going to make it. You know, I, don't need I felt to check. like that for Bonaire. And then so he was like, do you, need a, do you need a COVID test? I was like, ooh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. There was ooh. a moment where <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. And then I looked. I was like, ooh, I hope we don't need one. Right. Let me Google. Because it was like within 24 hours. I was like, there's no yeah. way. Exactly. So there, like, I feel like the way travel used to be, it felt so carefree. I could have a moment where I thought, you know what? Next week, I am going to go somewhere. Or there's a concert I want to go to. I'm going to go to another country. I just have to pack a bag. And the only thing I have to stress about is non-rev. Right. And then it, like difficulty level increased it became all about 
well, now you need to get, like, figure out your COVID test before you leave the country. Make sure that you have all these extra forms filled out. Because, mm-hmm. like, going to Colombia, you have, like, a million different forms that you have to have before you go. Then get a COVID test before you leave. There's just a lot that you're having to look up. Don't even get me started in a lot of the Asian countries and the, the way that they were doing, like, their um, quarantines. Yeah, Thailand is done with theirs. So is Bali. They've lifted theirs. The Philippines, okay. you can fly in now. Yeah. So, I think we're done. We are post-pandemic. Everybody okay. is lifting their restrictions. Fuel is so high, and the energy prices are so real mm-hmm. that you cannot have two struggles. I could see that. So now we're at the point where I think, <laughs> well, I want to say travel is getting back to the things that made it carefree, like you theoretically should be able to get on a plane, but now you're fighting staffing shortages. Mm-hmm. So you... It, like, keeps on feeling like, oh, we're almost back at normal. We're clawing our way through bloody stumps of our nails to get back to normal. And then just something else, difficulty level increase one more time. You're like, stop it. We don't need any more of this. Yeah, it's like Mortal Kombat around this bitch. So where does flirting with travel go from here? I know we just left off on a really hopeful note about the, uh, the Mortal Kombat of travel landscape <laughs> mortal con- it's you against the airlines right uh well, where does flirting with travel go well we grow we continue yeah we're back on the road you're going to be seeing our faces a lot more consistently mm-hmm. like we said we are back so tune in we have new videos coming up every other week and make sure to follow us on instagram yes flirting with travel because we have some fun snippets of our filming experiences. Mm-hmm. We're also going to be sharing a little bit more of what it actually looks like to travel with us. And we are out here. We have, I, I think that we have a better advantage because we do travel so much. Mm-hmm. So even with the hiccups that everybody is facing, um, we have a lot of hacks. So she does non-rev. I, I, I fly confirmed. But I use a lot of points. Mm-hmm. In this last month of travel that I've been on, A lot of it has been booked with points to offset the cost. So I'm telling you how high the prices are, but I've spent maybe 25 or 30% in cash and the rest have been with my points because I put everything on my credit cards. Um, And that way my expenses, you're still spending the money, but there's some value added in that way. And that is how I can offset my travel costs to continue to move forward and not be stuck. Otherwise, everything is really high. Like, just hotels are high. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say this. Mm-hmm. One of the features I really, really love that I've experienced extensively because when I was in Miami, I stayed at the Moxie Hotel. Super cute hotel. Love it. Very trendy, small mm-hmm. spaces, but they maximize. Um, check out the video I've done on that. It is Marriott has a chat feature. And each hotel responds on the chat. They're actually very responsive. So I talked to the hotel uh, guest desk staff in Bonaire through that. That was how I got like the birthday package done. And they were like, what do you want? And we could talk through that. By the time I get to the hotels, it's like they know me. They're like, oh, Misty, how are you? Because I've been talking to them before I get to the airport. Mm -hmm. Um, And that chat feature is through the Marriott Bonvoy app. And it's been phenomenal for me. So I do think the tech advances have been great because the other thing I really like with this new landscape of travel, Delta. I hate calling people. I do not like sitting on the phone. Mm -hmm. And so Delta now does their chat app through iMessage if you have an iPhone. Now, if you don't have an iPhone, that's a whole other story. So I'm not sure how you're living life. But in this sense... Delta has their messenger app and you can actually book tickets, modify your reservation, get help with anything through this chat on your message. And it'd be just like you talking to anybody that you're you're messaging. So like that's how I've changed reservations when the phone like whole time was like three hours. I would just sit on that. And so if you takes you three hours on a chat, it's much easier than like being on the phone. Mm hmm. So I give Delta credit for that because I booked three tickets that way because I was having issues through their app and it was a it was easily resolved. Nice. Well, that is awesome. Yeah. So really, what's going to happen is that we have lots of lots of new tips, lots of new tricks. Follow us. Yeah. Follow the journey. 
that we are on. If you're returning, welcome back. If you're new, welcome here. That's all for this week. Link up with us on Instagram at Flirting With Travel or check out flirtingwithtravel.com for itineraries and more travel hacks. Taking off. Love you.